How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be taking a look at Haunt from 2019. This is a Shudder exclusive um, or at least it was when it was originally made. I think this is floating around Hulu or something at the time of recording so it's breaking out I guess. Um, this is directed by Scott Beck and Brian Woods and the front of the box will remind you that they're the writers of A Quiet Place. They wrote this script as well, and I think the story is something like they wrote both scripts at the same time, and after Quiet Place was successful, they were asked to direct their other script, which is pretty cool. Uh, this movie stars Katie Stevens, Will Britton, and Lauren McCain, and also uh, the front of the box will remind you that this was produced by Eli Roth. Eli Roth has directed some cool horror movies like Hostel, but kind of like Sam Raimi, he's done a bunch of work as a producer as well, so good for him for helping bring all these other projects to life. And this movie, I had heard a little bit about it. Not the biggest splash, but it did make a splash, and this movie does have its group of fans. And I had seen it, and I had seen these fun, old-school, retro Halloween masks. I knew I had to check it out. And it does do a lot right. You know, a haunted house, but is it real? That's always going to be a fun concept. And seeing haunted houses is always going to be fun. There's some fun traps in here, a fair amount of atmosphere. And like I said, those masks are pretty cool. Gotta love vintage Halloween creepy vacuum form mask. So it does a lot, but this is always a movie that I wish had done more, you know? it Its plot is pretty minimal. Go into the haunted house, oh no, it's real. But there's not much going on other than the base plot and some cool atmosphere. Like, the villains, you don't really know why they're doing this, but it kind of sits on an annoying amount, where I wish kind of they were more mysterious, show us some weird stuff and don't explain it, or I wish you had given them some sort of backstory and some sort of motivation, because as it stands now, they just feel like generic horror movie bad guys. And I wish that there was something going on with them, but, I mean, they got cool mask, and when they... We find out why they wear masks. I wasn't really super happy with that explanation, but I wish that there was more. And same with the characters. I didn't really latch on to them. I, they all have like one or two things about them, but honestly, there's one of them that I remember that's uh, basically Stooge from Night of the Demons, and he has a bit of personality, and that's good. I guess he's the best character. Because, honestly, with, like, her friends, I I kept forgetting exactly how many there were. Like, one will show up later at the end, and I'm like, did she have one more friend left? I guess she did. They don't really stand out. And the movie, like I said, it starts too quickly. That's a really bad thing. That's why Conjuring 3 isn't as good as Conjuring 1 and 2. You really have to build time. You have to let us know our characters. You have to explain why we care about them. But jumping straight into the action and going on a relatively simple plot, it's like I didn't care so much about them, and now we don't have any setup time left. So... It is fun to see a creepy haunted house, I'll give you that. There is some fun atmosphere and some of the traps are cool. It's just one that is pretty thin. It's, I just wish there was more to this and, and there really isn't. Anyway, let's talk a bit about the plot in order to analyze it further. No major spoilers, I just want to dig down a little deeper into this one. We open up with the main girl. She's breaking up with her boyfriend, who, because she's applying makeup over a bruise, is heavily implied to be an abuser. And the roommate helps her break up over text, and he sends, because she's wearing like a red hoodie, guess what I'm going to be for Halloween? In a picture of the big bad wolf? Dude, that's, 
that's not scary. That's cringy. And in this boyfriend character, he's, to be honest, a really stock villain character. Not super unique or interesting, and we only see him in the beginning through text. Yeah, there's more with him later, but, you know, having him through text messages just makes him seem like a whiny millennial and not a big, scary villain. And yeah, I don't know, this domestic abuse angle, you find out that her father was abusive as well, and it does have a few scenes later on, and it does lead to a fun sequence at the absolute end of the film. But to be honest, with just a few edits, you could cut out the subplot completely. And that's the thing. It's a weighty issue that gets tacked on to a very minor subplot, and this very minor subplot is pretending to be one of the movie's main themes. This was really just tacked on, and not thought out, and not used in a, in a way that the weight of the subject needs to be used as. But whatever, they go to a club, and you get to the club and I immediately feel like an old man. Ah, loud music and neon lights. And you get to kind of see the characters there, but again, they don't stand out. And we're going to jump into the plot really, really quick. One scene where they're hanging out in the bar, and that's it. Well, I hope that does it for you, because <laughs> we're, we're in it now. The characters go to a haunted house. We get a clown character at the front messing with them, kind of setting the tone, and they have to sign these waivers, again, setting the tone that this might be dangerous. It, it sets the tone well enough. So yeah, one of these movies' uh, main themes is the idea of do you know when the haunt people are just messing with you or do you know when they're really threatening? And that's a, a good Halloween-y theme, but I, as an audience, know that they're going to this one haunted house, so I kind of know that, yeah, they're going to be evil. They do play with this a little bit, like, there's a ghost character that you kind of think, okay, maybe he's just a normal guy that doesn't know what his co-workers do. So they play a little, but you know, for the most part, it's going to be evil. And I wish it was a little harder to tell. Uh, for example, a movie that does this theme better is The House is October Built. And that's a found footage movie where characters go to a bunch of different haunted houses and see a bunch of different people. And having a wider array, you really don't know who's in on it and who's not. So it touches upon a good idea, but again, doesn't do it as well as Houses October built and really could have built on this idea and done a lot more with it. But it just kind of stands as the characters don't know and we as an audience are pretty sure and they don't even do enough with really that irony because the characters are kind of suspicious. It's a plot point that's interesting that just didn't live up to its potential. They go in, there's some fun puzzles, there's that little spinny tunnel thing that makes you nauseous and then stick your hand in the hole and guess the body parts. Oh, it's an eyeball. No, it's just a grape. Gags like that. And there are some sequences, like there's one where you have to go in a coffin and the door in the back isn't going to open till you shut the first one. And you have to be in there for like 10 seconds or something. It's a good sequence, but, you know, I, I kind of feel like this is Saw without the reverse bear trap. There needed to be something, something a little bigger something a little more iconic because I think the coffin's the best one it's scary but it's not it's not a clincher you know and overall there are some fun sequences but it doesn't ever get as far as I wished it did you know and eventually they're gonna split up these characters split up 
way too much. It's like they're the Scooby-Doo gang or something. And that allows them to do more traps, I guess. I think that's the only reason the writers wrote that they split up. But eventually one will go missing, another one will get cut, they start to suspect it's real, and eventually shenanigans will ensue, right? And, you know, there, there are some fun action sequences, there are some, there's some good bits of gore, and, like, a, a good example is there's a kill with, the, with a character with a hammer, and for whatever reason, they edited away from the initial conflict. It felt like it had some weird edited version of the movie. But then when they cut back, there's a good gore effect. And I'm like, what's with that awkward edit? A, there's some good gore. And a lot of it is a balancing act like that, where there's something really good and something not so good. There's this fun bit with a shotgun trap. And it's a good moment. It has some good ideas. But at one point, the main character stands up and walks right in the path of the shotgun for a little bit, not ducking or going to the side. It's like, what are you doing, girl? You're going to get blown up with a shotgun. But, you know, fun sequences and we know where this is going. And that's kind of the thing, you know, like with Houses October built, I didn't know as much where it was going. This one kind of did, and it's just a case of I like it, but wish it was better. And it's one of those movies that has a good thing going for it. It's a real haunted house. Fun shenanigans ensue, but the themes aren't super deep. The characters aren't super deep. It's just go into a haunted house. It's real. That's the movie. And at the end of the day, it just feels kind of shallow but at least there's fun mask in some atmosphere. I just something I'm constantly wishing was better. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be a Halloween playlist if you want to see me talking about more Halloween movies. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.